Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. Welcome to Tales from the Flipside. This is the pro spec list where we bring you additional books that are not seen on the Key Collector app. So let's go ahead and get started with number 15. This is uh, USA Avengers number five. Uh, this is a Mighty Mel V pick, as you may have guessed, given the uh, he's the biggest champion of Moon Girl on the planet. The thinking behind this book is, is that when Moon Girl takes over, some of her harder to find books are really going to be sought after. Uh, this book was a qualifier. So in order to be able to qualify for this book, uh, retailers had to buy 90% of what they purchased of USA Avengers number two. You know, as issues climb, particularly after issues one and two, uh, the, uh, the orders tend to dip. So um, retailers would have had to really up their orders to be able to even qualify for this one. So uh, a really good cover here of an awesome character and, uh, and something that uh, if you see uh, in the back issue bins there, uh, definitely pick up. Uh, it could see some heat here uh, when her own show comes out and, and she begins to get more popular with the mainstream. At number 14, we have Deadpool Secret Secret Wars, number two. Uh, this was not Mr. Longshort's pick this week. This was my pick. Uh, Gwen Poole, uh, I, from what I understand, uh, this book was spoken about, uh, well, it's been spoken about a lot, uh, but even in, in this group uh, within the last 12 months, the reason I bring it up today is a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, it really hasn't moved as much as the market has 9.8 of this can still be had for right around $300 and raws are between 50 and hundred, depending on the grade. Uh, the big book dollar wise right now is that incentive variant for the first full appearance in that Howard of the duck, uh, number one, that that's a great book. I'd love to own it, but that whole run and this character in general wouldn't even exist without this book. She was conceived of for this uh, goofy variant that, that Chris Bocciolo uh, did for Deadpool's Secret Secret Wars number two. And this will always be, at least from everything that's out there right now, she's got a lot of great covers. This is her iconic cover. It's, the, it's her most important book and it hasn't moved as much as the rest on the market. So that's why I, I suggested it this week. I think it is still quite undervalued for a kind of next gen character. Yeah, what I will say about this is this is not considered her first appearance and this is classic Gwenpool. She makes her first cover appearance before she makes her first appearance, so. At number 13, we have Nintendo Comic Systems Sneak Preview. So I think this is Tolfer's pick. Uh, this is first cameo for Legend of Zelda. Uh, as we know, Legend of Zelda is a very lucrative franchise, and we're seeing more and more video game speculation enter the comic book market. There's even video game manuals even being graded, right, by CGC. So this book's around 100 bucks. If you can find it, it's a definitely good buy. At number 12, we have a user submission from Pat Lack. Justice Society, JSA, number 23. So what Patrick had sent me was saying that uh, this is a Alex Ross cover, one of the best Black Adam covers out there. It's still available for $15 to $20 and could become one of his top three iconic covers. Great pick. Thank you for your submission. At number 11, we have Avengers 269. So when I uh, finished the Loki uh, finale, um, pretty much... Minutes after, I was looking for good Avengers books featuring Kang stories. And this was one that was on my radar that I wanted to share with the panel to be voted on. And in here has the first appearance of the Psyche Globe. Marvel artifact books are sought out for. And this book, I think in particular, uh, with the Psyche Globe is quite cool because this globe contains all the memories of slain Kangs. And when Immortus lets Kang have the Psyche Globe, it drives him mad. And it makes Kang activate a device in his helmet, splits him into two Kangs. One heads into the 40th century. The other goes and joins the Council of Cross-Time Kangs. And that version of Kang becomes Nathaniel Richards. 
It's also a very, very cool uh, Kang battle cover. Uh, it's a, also an origin of the Council of Kangs, too. So, hey, knowledge is power, right? So this is something that could be pretty cool lore for uh, the MCU to rival the Infinity Gauntlet. For the reason you're all here, our top 10. At number 10, we have Star Wars Thrawn number three. This is a pretty cool book. It's already... Yeah, uh, at twenty bucks, it's the first appearance of uh, Arianda Price. As we get closer to Thrawn, you know, supporting characters are going to be key. This is a good spec book, I would say. You know, she she's a powerful moth that killed a uh, Kanan, so pretty important. Uh, I would say that this book you can still get it on the cheap right now, so get it while you can. At number nine, we have. Avengers West Coast number 61. All right. So after the Loki show, you know, everything is hot right now. Anything dealing with Immortus or or Kang. This is the origin of Immortus. And uh, in, in this book is uh, a small cameo of the timekeepers. And then it is revealed that uh, Scarlet Witch is uh, a Nexus being. So, you know... Uh, who would have thought this book uh, would be an important book, you know, Avengers West Coast, but this book, it, this book right now is picking up a lot of steam. At number eight, we have Iron Fist, number 74, the second print. All right. So uh, this is uh, a second print and it's a Jeff to call cover. Everybody think, well, this has got to be my pick. It was not my pick, but I'm certainly happy to speak about it. This is a beautiful, um, you know, a beautiful rare printing by uh, an artist, I think, who's really beginning to catch the attention of the community. And, uh, and you know, I, I think there's the upside for this could be pretty uh, pretty substantial. The buy-in right now for this is is more or less cover. Um, so nobody's going to really be asked a lot to step in here. But but Jeff DeCall um, has done some of, some of the more iconic modern covers and his star is rising and uh and then this book has uh, a, a lot of room to grow at number seven we have black <laughs> number one the, the director's cut this is another submission from pat lack thank you again patrick uh, so i've talked a lot about black hammer in the past so uh, i'm really happy about this pick one thing that we've talked about often on this show is eisner award-winning books or even Eisner nominated books uh, tend to be adapted into other uh, media or they're uh, acclaimed uh, just as comics themselves and rise in value. Um, so Black Hammer did win the Eisner Award. I think after the entire Black Hammer series was uh, done, the original series, they released this uh, director's cut that's just in black and white, including the cover. It's the rarest print of issue number one. Comicron has it at just over 2,700 copies. It's still available for, on eBay for under $40. And it's, it's still ripe for adaptation, whether it's TV. It, it was optioned uh, a while back. I do know that option expired. Uh, and then you've also seen Jeff Lemire uh, come back to it recently a matter of fact i i was reading the unteens uh retailer preview uh, a couple of days ago so uh for a while there jeff was letting other people create stories in the world of black hammer now he's come back to it he's focused on it i think we'll see it optioned again i'm gonna i'm gonna second that i th i think this is a really smart pick if only because you know when we talk about this option there's a lot of books that are optioned a lot of indie titles that are optioned even by really famous creators, but uh, in the community, this isn't really mentioned as a show or a movie. This is where a lot of people are really expecting this to be a world, like a universe unto itself that could spawn multiple shows and multiple uh, just really cool properties. So I think there's a lot of potential with the Black Hammer. At number six, we have She-Hulk number 163. This was a another Mighty Mel V pick and uh, a book, frankly, I've always admired. So uh, there's a lot going for this book. Uh, one, um, it's a stunning Raza cover. 
Um, if you look at what's going on in this cover here, She-Hulk is basically putting a, a puzzle together uh, of her first series, um, um, She-Hulk number one. So that's super cool in its own right. Two, you know, this is a final issue in, in, in the series. We've talked a lot on this show about how uh, when, when, when issues or series get canceled, um, it's largely due, and that's changed a little bit recently, but but back in the day, that was largely due because due to the fact that people weren't reading it, orders had dropped, and, uh, you know, it makes them a bit harder to find. Uh, this isn't super scarce, um, but it's not easy. I, I think this is in the, and please correct me if I'm wrong, in the thirteen to 15,000 sort of ordered range, which is not, which is not highly ordered by any means. Uh, not super rare, but not highly ordered. Uh, and lastly, there is a first appearance in this uh, book, which is probably the least important reason to own at this point, but it's a mutant named Burn um, who shows up in here. But when you put that all together, um, you know, this is a book that you can find in back issue bins right now for cover um, that's super appealing. And uh, I've talked to Mel about this book uh, on, on several occasions, and, and I'm happy to see that they made the list. At number five, we have Something is Killing the Children, number 11, the Jenny Frizen variant. This is actually not one of my submissions. This is from Andy in the Spotlight series. And with this, you have uh, the first full appearance of Old Dragon. And <laughs> with House of Slaughter on the horizon, uh, this could be a huge part of the franchise. Uh, one other thing to mention is that there is a 1 in 25 version of this cover where it's in a grayscale. A beautiful cover, pretty easy to pick up. A lot of people are probably more familiar with the 1 in 100, which uh, plays a homage to Department of Truth, number one. But there's also, you know, this first full appearance in here. So it's a great book. And also watch out for the A cover Virgin variant, which is a one per store. Yeah, I mean, this is Jenny Frizen. I mean, she's done some amazing stuff. You know, her, her, she did a cover for, for, for issue number one that, that that's pretty iconic. Yeah. You know, this is right up there for me. I, I think this cover is absolutely beautiful, and and, and doesn't get the uh, the respect it deserves at this point. But uh, yeah, I love this book. At number four, we have Avengers one eighty one. So this is so underappreciated, so undervalued. This is the first appearance of Scott Lang uh, in a comic book. If we took any Avenger. And, and their first appearance. And for me, I, I think this, this is not spec. This is, it's so cheap. How can you not, you know, buy them? Yeah. You know, Scott Lang saved all the Avengers in Endgame, did he not? You know, and it wasn't Ant-Man that saved him. It was Scott Lang, you know? So I, I would say that, you know, with the, the new movie fixing to come out, He's going to play a, a huge role in, in, in what's coming forward. Man, you can grab copies, raw copies, for 30 bucks. I mean, it's it's so undervalued, it's a joke. Yeah, you know, it's super smart, Joe, on this pick. You know, I'll, I'll at late night, after my whole house goes to sleep, I'll throw on Endgame, right? And I'll watch it, and I'll admire Paul Rudd's performance of the character and really – how important he is to the MCU and his books are almost like his character. They're just under respected, right? Undervalued. And, uh, and, and, and I've specced on the first appearance when he shows up as Ant-Man, but, I, but I think you're right that, that, that this book, Scott Lang, just a character himself showing up is, is super underappreciated. Another movie coming. He may stick around a bit longer in the MCU. Who knows? But uh, I like this pick a lot, man. Good job. For our number three book, we have Avengers 267. So this is the first appearance of the Cross Time Kings. It's led by the Prime King uh, from Earth 6311. <laughs> he is a king that is, uh, convinces Immortus to eliminate all variant kings in the multiverse so that the Prime King, Destiny, will end up becoming Immortus. Yeah, I mean, given what's going on in Loki, right, this, this, this book should certainly take off. Um, you know, Kang is going to be front and center for a while now, right? Kang is not one of these specs where the character come, comes and goes. We're going to be living with, with Kang for uh, the next five years or more, probably. At so, least, um, yeah. so um, you know, this, this is probably a pretty smart pickup at this point. Um, you know, with any of these books, right, these prices spike and then they tend to dip. 
maybe look for these if they dip a little bit rather than the, sort of the immediate spike. Um, but, but, but this one could be a good one longer term. I also like how this book, um, Kang, you see him creating robotic Kangs. And that's what happened in the Loki show with the timekeepers, right? So, oh, yeah. and it was it was just it was just said that Jonathan Majors voiced all of the timekeepers in the Loki show. So, I, definitely Marvel time and time again are, is drawing inspiration from these good books, and it's not just good spec, but it's also good books to collect and to read as well. For our number two book, we have Marvel Team Up King Size Annual One. Okay, this, so this is another underappreciated, undervalued book. Um, it's it's the first meeting of the modern day X Men and Spider Man. So I mean, if you if you if you want to spec on something that that potentially has legs, this uh, most certainly does. And you know, of course, the early early appearance of Wolverine on the cover with his big old claws sticking out. I mean, it, it's just such a cool cover and it's uh it it uh it's not giant size x-men but man, it's pretty close to that issue it's only like eight months off i think uh giant size came out in 70 75 so this uh in summer of 75 and this one came out uh in almost a year later in 76 so uh man just um there's only 28 copies graded in a 98. That's how underappreciated this book is. Just like uh, maybe 400 total in the census on the CGC census. So, I mean, this there's a lot of raws out there th that you can get for cheap. I mean, this this potentially could be a big book. And for our number one book, I'm sure all you DC readers will be pleasantly surprised. But we have. Future State, Teen Titans number two, the win variant. Yeah, I, I came through for for, you, for all of you, and uh, I'm <laughs> as surprised as you are. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I put this forward as as a pick because I believe that it will be the iconic Red X cover for years to come. I'm not going to argue that this is uh, you know any kind of first appearance first full uh you know first cover you know obviously he's in teen titans go number 23 um and he's on the cover of dc nation future state and future state teen titans number one second print in the background but this is the earliest cover where he's featured solo and dustin Wynn just knocks it out of the park Oh, yeah. uh, with this one, I, I compare it to um, if you take Batman Harley Quinn and and put it side by side with Batman Adventures number twelve, right? You know, Batman Adventures number twelve is obviously the first Harley Quinn, but uh, the Batman Harley Quinn um, that Alex Ross did is 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 iconic. Um, I, I see that in this kind of uh, light. Now, I know we don't know who Red X is, but I don't really think it matters uh, who's behind the mask. I think what's most important is that the mythos and that the costume is going to live on. Uh, you know, DC is, I think, struggling to make do with their IP. What we saw earlier this year with Red X coming into the fold is that uh, nostalgia and that uh, that valuable IP that they have, and I don't expect them to uh, sleep on it. So I think uh, people will be seeking this one out for a while. I think Red X's popularity will only continue to grow. So, so who's Red X, Steve? Who is it? Well, I want to thank everyone <laughs> for watching the pros prospect list. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Catch y'all on the flip side.
Didn't realize there was an appearance of a red in this book. Uh, anyways. Of, of what? Of a rat. <laughs> oh yeah man okay <laughs> yeah. all right that's good that's yeah. good 